So this promises to charge your iPhone via MagSafe 30 to 45% faster. Does it work? Let's find out. So I generally don't like cables that much. I try to avoid them where I can. I don't like the clutter of cables. And so I try to minimize the amount of cables on my desk. I actually use a wireless keyboard, trackpad and mouse, but also all the cables that I need, be it the power or the screen monitors or even the accessories and the ethernet, they all go to a Thunderbolt dock. And then there's only one single cable going into my MacBook. Now, since I spend most of my time on my desk, I do need a phone charger on or near my desk. Again, I try to avoid cables, so I've always used wireless chargers. Now, when Apple introduced MagSafe a couple years back, I switched to that. Not only does it look better and less clutter, less wires, it's also more convenient and it also acts as a phone stand. My phone is then just sitting in front of me on my desk, but also charging at the same time. So when Zeke or Zyke reached out asking if I'd like to review their MagSafe charger that promises to charge your iPhone 30 to 45% faster. I was very intrigued. So I accepted and yes, I did get this for free, but no, it will not impact my review, which will remain objective and unbiased. So let's get started with the unboxing. There it is, the two-in-one wireless charger made for MagSafe and we'll talk about that in a bit. On the back, it says faster wireless charging up to 15 watts. In the box, you get the charger in a somewhat cheap plasticky box. I did expect a little better here, a bit more higher quality, especially at this price point. But nonetheless, you get a user manual and there it is. The power adapter and the charger itself. First impressions, it looks quite nice. I really like the material they used here. Very soft fabric, cable management on the back, and then the button to turn on the fan to accelerate the charging. Now, before we talk more about the charger, let's talk about wireless charging in MagSafe for a sec. So wireless charging is based on the principle of electromagnetic induction. And without going into much details there, it simply means there's a coil in your phone, a coil on the charger. The current goes through the coil in the charger. It produces a magnetic field, which in turn induces, hence the term, an electric current in the second coil, which is the one in your phone. And this electric current charges your phone. The problem with that it's an inefficient system and a great deal of energy is lost as heat. This is even more pronounced when the coils are not perfectly aligned. Even more power is lost as heat over there, which is why you sometimes on traditional wireless Qi chargers feel that your phone gets quite hot and sometimes it does not charge properly. Now, when Apple introduced MagSafe for the iPhone 12, it sought to combat that aspect by placing magnets around the coils of the phone and the charger, they ensure a perfect alignment every single time. And that's partly why MagSafe can charge your phone at 15 watts or up to 15 watts, and we'll talk about that in a sec, versus only seven and a half watts on traditional Qi wireless chargers. Now, even with MagSafe reducing the loss of energy in terms of heat, inductive charging remains as a system less efficient than charging via cable and produces more heat. And this is an important point because heat is the number one enemy of lithium ion batteries. It simply accelerates their demise. Now our smartphones are actually smart. When they detect too much heat starting to build up, they throttle the power they're drawing as a self protection. So while MagSafe charging is often advertised as charging at 15 watts, it's technically up to 15 watts. It does not sustain the full 15 watts all throughout the charging period, and that's because of the heat buildup. Enter the Zeke charger. The reason it promises faster MagSafe charging is because it has a fan built in that cools down the phone, which in theory means it can sustain those 15 watts for longer periods of time. And does it work? Well, it actually does. I've been testing this for two weeks, charging and discharging my iPhone 14 Pro Max and my iPhone 12 as well, and writing down how fast it's charging. 
at each 10 minute interval. Now for these tests, I use the Belkin 3-in-1 charger, which is an MFI made for iPhone charger. It's certified by Apple and it charges at 15 watts as my control. And the Zeek charger, which by the way, is also officially licensed and certified by Apple. So it also charges at 15 watts. Now on that note, one thing to keep in mind, there is a difference between a MagSafe compatible charger, which often means a third party accessory just uses magnets on top of a, a normal Qi charger, but doesn't have official licensed MagSafe technology. These often charge at seven and a half watts. Only MFI or made for iPhone accessories are certified by Apple and charge at the full 15 watts or up to 15 watts. And now to the results of the tests. And I, I made a lot of tests with and without cases, starting at different charge levels, etc. The output of that is a huge Excel sheet with a lot of numbers. I'm not going to go through all that, but I did summarize it in this graph. On the iPhone 14 Pro Max, this in blue is how fast it charges on the Belkin at 15 watts, theoretically. In orange over here is how fast it charges on the Zeke charger. On the Belkin, it takes about 170 minutes for a full charge, starting at 10%. On the Zeke, it takes 120 minutes. That is 50 minutes faster. That's about 42% faster and indeed in line with their claim of 30 to 45% faster. On the iPhone 12, same thing. This is Belkin, 150 minutes for a full charge. This is Zeke, 110 minutes for a full charge, 40 minutes faster. That's still about 37% faster. Now it gets even more interesting because your phone fast charges up until about 80 or 85%. It slows down after that, even with optimized charging turned off, which I also have turned off for the sake of these tests. And after that 80, 85%, I did see that the Delta, the percentage increase every 10 minutes was about five to 6% on both the Zeke and the Belkin. So there isn't much speed gain anymore after 80 or 85%. So if we look at the charging time until 80%, then on the Belkin, it took 120 minutes. On the Zeke, it took 70 minutes. That's a whopping 70% faster. On the iPhone 12, it took about 110 minutes with the Belkin and only 50 minutes with the Zeke, 83% faster. That is pretty impressive. Now, in addition to the fan, which you can toggle on and off by pressing this touch sensitive button, it also has a really nice thing, a light that turns on when you're charging at 15 watts or fast charging. And that's pretty cool because you can't otherwise know when you're fast charging like you can on an Android phone where it actually says fast charging. And that's really cool to have. And it actually works. While I don't have a way to actually measure how many watts it is charging at, I did the test with and without the fan on. And I noticed that without the fan on, at about 30 minutes into charging the phone, the light turns off. And then it goes back on after about 20 minutes. And then for some 20 minutes, it turns off again, etc., etc. And then looking at the charging times, it also confirms that this indeed works because without the fan, the phone took about 150 minutes for a full charge, just like it did with the Belkin. So it appears that the light works and it actually tells you when you're charging your phone at 15 watts. The Z charger also has an adjustable 40 degree angle, which is also nice to have. And it's a two in one charger. So it has another Qi charger on its base that can charge another phone, albeit at only 10 watts or 7.5 watts if it's an iPhone, because this is not MagSafe, but it's also perfect to charge your AirPods Pro. And I really like the texture and the feel of it. Kind of a smooth fabric, very well made. The entire charger actually is very well made. And it must be because it's not cheap. It retails at about $140. However, Zeke has provided me a coupon code, which will give you a 20% discount should you wish to purchase it. Link will be in the description below. But there is one thing I don't particularly like about this charger or wish it was made better. The fan, although great, is a bit louder than what I would have liked. I'm not sure if this was necessary to provide enough cooling for it to be effective. My gut says maybe some design changes could have resulted in a lower noise level. 
but I can't say that for certain. All I can say, as a consumer, I would have liked if it was more quiet. And hey, maybe this is an idea for their product team for an improved second version of this charger. Thanks for watching. As always, if you liked the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.